Welcome back to Ken Rosewall Arena here in Sydney. And it is a massive clash for the New South Wales Swifts and the Collingwood Magpies as they still search for that first win of the season. Well, let's just have a look now at the team cards. A reminder of how both sides will start the day. Helen Housby back at goal shooter with Kelly Singleton out the front. We thought that was interesting after the performance of Fawns last week. Maddie Proud and Paige Hadley back in the mix. The Swifts will be wrapped with that. Ali Smith, Maddie Turner, Sarah Clow back at goalkeeper. Spent the entire game out at goal defence last week. And there's your bench, Fraser, O'Shaughnessy and Fawns. And Magpies lining up. Big game from Nelson tonight in goal shooter. Garbin gets a start at goal attack, supported by Brown, who was in fine form last week's so game. Jovic, Razzle as wing defence, Ward and Mentor in goalkeeper. So it'll be the Collingwood Magpies that get us underway here. Round three, Heritage round. And they're straight into the action. Brown through to Nelson. And on the board in a matter of seconds, that was under 10 seconds. So they're here and they've got a point to prove. Well, Absolutely. Just... Look at that intensity. Clean intercept from Jovic. And the vision and the confidence and the intensity that they're bringing to this match already. And clearing the mess straight away. Goes from Garvin. It's a big ball. So, well, the intent is clear, isn't it? Let's not stuff around with it. Let's get it in the circle and score from it as mentor takes another one. There we go. I talked about she's only had one intercept, comes out and gets one straight in the first part of the match. Well, they certainly have come to play, haven't they? And Caitlin Bassett in the opener was talking about how important it is to get the wins early, not leave your run too late. Garvin, Nelson. And another one on the board with the centre pass to follow. So an opportunity here for the Collingwood Magpies to go three zip very quickly. Garvin. Jovic. Oh, very close to a three seconds. We saw a lot of those last week. What I like early on is the demanding of the space that Nelson is already doing. She wants that ball. They're giving it to her, and this is where the confidence is coming from. Well, she's dangerous to stop when she's confident, isn't she? You're so right about that. Absolutely. Proud. Up and over. That's a nice entry into Helen Housby. Well, the crowd like it. They had to wait a little while for it to happen. And Helen Housby is trying to fire up her side. Ward, Garvin, Brazel. Well, that is a very good contest from Singleton. Looks like a contact from behind, but gets away with it. And that's one of those moments that you do have to play the umpire. It's such a fast-paced game that Brazza's looking with her hands up going, hey, look at that, and you just got to play on. We see the replay here. Oh, it's for sure a contact. <laughs> but anyway, it gets away with it, does Kelly Singleton. Housby, proud. Housby again. Well, she has certainly injected herself in this play early. Now three back for the Swifts, and they all come through Helen Housby. You can see the intent, Maddie Brown, oh, sorry, Kelsey Brown just running to take the penalty, wants to get on with the job. You do, you don't want defenders to get the time to adjust and get into play. You want to get that ball going. So the Magpie is still just the one point in front, Singleton, Hadley. Long ball to Housby. Hadley, Singleton again up the middle, so plenty of rotation. And that's what we saw a lot with Fawns and Housby last week too, is really happy to rotate, change positions. Very different to having a Sammy Wallace in there. And they have to, they're not Sammy Wallace, so they can't play with that style. And as defenders, we're used to this tall target in the shooting end, so changing it up is just as hard to play against. Brown, Garvin. Yeah, well she did well to milk the penalty just by taking the ball strongly there, Sophie Garvin. Garvin again. Always going to look directly into Nelson. Sophie Garvin actually, at, during the TGC, had some of the most assists by any player. And I think she can do that, either take the drive and suck the defenders in, or your really powerful, strong tool connects with your goal shooter. Singleton. 
Brazel, well, she's trying to get her own back with a contest from behind, see if she could get away with it too. Housby. You always want to even it up, don't you? Housby doing all the damage for the New South Wales Swifts. Five from five. Jovic. Brown. Garvin again. So, oh, the Sarah Clow, what a contest. Sam Portman, how hard to do that? She got her feet round in front. You're bursting over there, I can see. I'm cheering as a former goalkeeper. It was clean, it was a high ball. She needs to get up and contest that. Great to see a stat and on her name already. Well, she's got one intercept for the whole season. That's it, there's number two. So she'll be happy with that as well. We spoke about the last two games of Sarah not being quite quiet. So she'll get confidence, the fact that she's just stopped that really confidence link between Brown and Nelson. Well, the New South Wales Swiss, here it is on the half we go. replay. Feet round beautifully and up strong with two. And just like that, the Swifts have taken control and it's a beautiful baseline drive coming from Kelly Singleton. And that's what will happen with this movement is the defenders will keep running with them and baseline drives like that will open up nicely. Kelly Singleton's first shot of the game. Brown. Brown again, Jovic, Garvin out again. Well. The game plan very clear, isn't it? Everyone do the work outside the circle, including Sophie Garvin, and Nelson is to stay put. It, it is. I reckon already, though, they've because of that last intercept by Sarah, they haven't given that ball. They're giving her credit now and looking sideways. Singleton. Adley. Proud. Housby. Big swing across the circle. Maddie Proud likes it, and Helen Housby is here to play. Put her head down and just busted along that baseline. Didn't care that Jodie Ann Ward was right there. Oh, here we go. It's a game turnaround now. Again, Turner, just the one intercept across the first couple of games. So both the Swift defenders have come to play as well. Housby. Wants a bit of absolutely everything. That was a rookie error, though, stepping in, closing up that three feet on Jeeva Mentor. Brown. Ward. Jovic. Long ball to Brown again. Ali Smith. Nearly a touch. The intensity in this match already is exactly what we asked for. Two teams that need a win on the ball. And that's a much better feed and a much better take from Nelson. Well, we just see Gabby Sinclair too has snuck in on the court in that goal attack position, a rolling sub being changed. And re the reason for that, I reckon, was the second phase depth from Magpies wasn't there. Turner was doing a great job in wearing Garvin and taking her out as an option. As we see Helen nail an absolute another goal. Helen Housby, 100%, eight from eight. Well, it was a slow start. They were down by three, the New South Wales Swifts. And they've just found the right gear now, haven't they? Another beautiful ball into Shimona Nelson. Swifts! Singleton Hadley. Crowd. Over the top. Tell you what, you don't often see Helen Housby this fired up this early. It generally comes as the game goes on, but she's pumped. And she needs to be, especially back in goal shooter. We're taking her out of a third on the netball court. She needs to bring that confidence and demand the ball, and she's not going to give up to a defender. Brown again, straight up, and there's that ball. We talked about the placement to Nelson. Most shooters, it goes behind. Well, the timeout, the HCF timeout has been called, and it's Nicole Richardson, and she feels a little momentum shift happen here. The New South Wales Swifts got themselves up by one, and Nicole Richardson wants a hold of her team. Okay, Let's have a listen. Just quickly here, from the attack perspective, if they start a double back in on Shimmy, our goal attack start back with them, give Kels the line, and then you're punching back up. Yeah? When you work that extra pass, it makes the net come off the 2v1. You've got to engage in there early to drag them back out, yeah? yeah. Defensively, let's see if we can go a box for the first couple, yeah? yeah? OK, a box for the first couple, deny the baseline drive, and then work your 
switches in the ring. Okay, let's go. Yeah, you step up and put more in the ring. And just, but just to stay a bit longer and then come on. Let's go, hands in. Let's go, yeah. If it's not there in attack, turn it back again. But the option's actually there. We're looking for something better. Give the easy yeah, ball. of chat coming from the Magpies. A lot from their head coach and Nicole Richardson. And she's asking for a box, Sam. What does she want from her defenders? Just a different style of change up in the defensive end. So the ability to deny this baseline drive that's happening by the Swifts attack end, and especially when we speak about their movement in the circle, when you set up a, a box offline formation, it allows you to work with your defenders beside you and take up a lot more space than working isolated one on one. Well, let's get down to Caitlin Bassett, who's on the sidelines for us, and she was having a listen in to the Swifts huddle. I sure was. I had a listen to what Bryony was saying to her attacking end and just encouraging Proud and Singleton to start working together a little bit more. Um, expect to see them coming together on a few throw-ins like we have here now. Um, and defensively, just to keep pushing those Magpies attackers up court. Well, it's opening up beautifully now, and there's one woman, the common denominator on the end of it. That is that lady there, Helen Housby. Turned this first quarter around. Well, lacking no confidence up this end, though, even with that tip that Sarah Clow got early. The game plan, very simple. Get it to Nelson. Turner. Smith. Hadley. Turner to Hadley again. Just very patient, the Swifts, waiting for something to open. And there's that movement in the circle again from the New South Wales Swifts. And they have to have the patience if they continue to move the ball and move uh, their movement as well. That's when it starts opening up in the defence end. And a beautiful, confident shot by Singleton. Absolutely, just her second shot of the game. But still sitting at 100% now, the New South Wales Swiss 12 from 12. Just like that, though, the Magpies into action. You can see the work there, Turner's doing around the body. But nothing going to stop Nelson from that sort of range. No, I like the start that she's had in terms of her confidence. And why wouldn't you give the ball if that placement is right and she goes up and takes it strong like she is today? Sarah Clow has no chance. We just saw, heard the siren, sorry, the start of the Power Five. So all the shots in the wide arc, if you're just joining us, and you to netball are worth two points. Well, it was a great tip from Ward and the cleanup from Brazil. How quickly, again, the Magpies down court and under the post to even it up again. Well, that was timely. Brown, direct. That is a pinpoint pass. And the Magpies take control up by one. This quarter's a bit of everything already, isn't it? Doesn't it? But I just love the fact that the intensity's here in this game. There's a different style between the teams. We're talking about the tack end of Swifts of being patient and moving and continually making those defenders move. And then we're talking about Magpies in their connection and confidence going bang one and in. Kelly Singleton, a different player than she was last week. Just played the first quarter and then was benched for Sophie Fords. So she's telling Bryony Acre she wants the gig. There's a different change of pass, and it was well read, wasn't it? Straight through the middle. Absolutely. I like the fact that they identified in that timeout that both defenders were coming back and working together. The way to beat that, straight through the middle. Proud again. He's that, done. Yeah, and that's exactly what Nicole Richardson wanted them to stop. But Singleton's so elusive. And I like this. We've spoken a lot about the leadership and having to stand up. Housby shooting 10 out of 10 and Singleton 100% herself at four. I like the fact that she's now coming into the game and shooting herself. Well, that is the first super shot attempt for the game. A miss for Sinclair. And the Swifts with an opportunity here. Just under three minutes left of this first quarter. Hadley. Singleton, and again, nice and patient. Looks like not a whole heap of communication happening between Ward and Mentor. No, and that's what we spoke about after that timeout in their playing individually. So they're chasing their tails of their attackers rather than working together, maybe playing split circles. So half and half to work together to stop that baseline drive. 
Oh, long ball of vision was there. Well taken, Helen Housby. Looked like Jeeva Mentor got a good hand on it. Well, you saw Housby's reaction to that pass. Slaps the hands together. Disappointed. The first real slip that the Swifts have had in this a, opening. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a credit to the Magpies. They, they did finally change thing up. Swifts let the ball go as we see another confident pass. And the connection that's really dominating between Brown and Nelson today. Well, it's Collingwood Magpies centre pass to follow too. Two minutes to go in this first quarter. Power five still in play. Sinclair. Jovic. Oh, an easy one this time. And really mixing it up beautifully in, ter in terms of the pass choice going into Nelson. Not all lobs. Well, a car. There you go. A couple of mistakes now creeping in for the New South Wales Swifts in the last couple of plays. We gave them credit of the patience that they were using, and now they've just stopped on that drive. Joby, Sinclair, again, the connection too easy. And again, looks like, like a, not enough communication between the defenders there. And if you look at the mismatch, they had Turner on Nelson, so really smart that they identified the fact that there was a different lack in height there. And the confidence in the feed, beautiful by Kelsey Brown. The confidence, the vision, letting it go. And I think the difference is Nelson is really strongly taking that in. Look at I Nicole just, Richardson, yeah. one of the most animated by far in the game in terms of head coaches. Gets involved in every single play, as does Maddie Proud and Helen Housby in this opening quarter. Well, the Swifts did get themselves back in front, down by two, but there's plenty of time left. And a Suncorp super shot on offer, long to Gabby Sinclair. And again, there's that mismatch you talked about, Sam. Turner on Nelson, they're happy to let that one go. I don't think they, absolutely, they need to be doing that all day, but I don't think Swifts at the moment know the answer to how to stop this really key connection. Well, I'm guessing in about 15 seconds, Brian Aikel get... is going to paint a picture for them. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, first miss of the game there from Helen Housby. But the penalty, so she'll get another go at it. And this will be the last shot of this opening quarter. There it is, the siren. So the Collingwood Magpies, after a really strong start, lost the lead and then snuck right back in it. They'll take a two-goal buffer into this first quarter break. Well, it is a two-time Premiership winning coach in Bryony April. And so we're we sitting here, exactly. so we should question it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it plays out. The Magpies back in action. Sinclair, Jovic, Brown. Back to Ward. Brown, Sinclair again, Jovic. So patient outside the circle. Happy to work it in a little bit closer now until that moment. Clow and O'Shaughnessy both in the circle together bring a lot of height. So I'm already seeing the fact that there's a lot more intensity, there's a lot more hands over that ball, and Magpies have slowed down just a little bit. Proud, well, had to weave the ball through, did Hadley. Hadley again, back to Clow Housby. Proud. Housby again, puts a head down, drives, pulls the penalty. Well, she's back in her favourite position, and this is where she came alive last week. Thought she was a little quiet when she was back at shooter. So if she's going to get any more fired up than she was in that first quarter, watch out, Magpies. Another good ball going into Nelson. Yet to miss in this game. That's now 20 from 20. And that's a volume that you want from a goal shooter. I think they need to be careful that while Nelson's on, they do have an option in their goal attack position that also can put up the ball. Fawns. Oh, there it is. Beautiful drive. The connection. We saw that last week. But Helen Housby just missed the last couple of shots. Magpies now with ball. Ward. Oh, you grabbed on to me. Go for it. Go for it. turn at penalise. So Brown will get on with it. Doesn't waste any time. Sinclair. And there's the connection. I'll tell you what, if Shimona Nelson keeps these numbers up, already sitting on 21 and just over one quarter to play, that's a big haul. Absolutely. I've been so impressed with her dominance in this first quarter and a bit of the game. That's exactly what Magpies need if they're going to contest in this league. A shooter that can shoot 
to the volume and has the strength that she's shown. And the consistency. She's been very hot and cold over the last couple of seasons. Only very new to netball, though. So we won't hold that against her. That is a beautiful drive from Maddie Proud at the connection from Housby. And I'm touching on the guessing of that's maybe the connection that why the change happened, that Helen Housby is so dominant in their centre pass receives and Proud is second in the league to second phase. Sinclair again didn't even look like she was going to shoot that. Well, it's luxury when you have a tall target at the back that's going to shoot close to the ball, isn't it? Well, it is until they have two defenders of the same height <laughs> on top of her. Sinclair will then need to start pulling the trigger herself. But we know she can do that. Wow, looks long. Turner, well, it was a dangerous ball anyway. It was long and over a lot of Magpies players, and they turn it over. Well, one of the few sprays coming on the feed into Shimona Nelson. There's the general play turnover, seven to five. Hadley wants something shorter. Nothing coming though. Look at the magpies in the middle of the court. Yeah, Sophie Fawns twice with ball in hand, didn't turn to sight the circle, so missed Housby. And that'll come. I think we need to be a little bit nice at the fact that this is her second, no however. Way. No nice, this is the big time. <laughs> but if that's what you've been playing for in the first quarter, she was sat on the bench and seen that strength. You've got to get your hips around, see that vision, and yes, give that ball. Here's the Harvey Norman replay again. Helen Howes has been doing this so well this quarter. The drive and the contact coming. Oh, beautiful swing again. Hadley to Proud just opens up the width of the circle, and there she is, Sophie Forbes. So Magpie's still sitting with a two-goal buffer. That is out, centre. Ten and a half to go in this second quarter. If you've just joined us and wondering why on earth the Swifts are in yellow, it is Heritage Round celebrating 25 years of the New South Wales Swifts and the yellow dress is a nod to the Sydney Swifts that started from 1997 to 2007. Well, this is an opportunity here. Jackie Newton on, but she's now penalised a long way from the goal circle. So the Swifts will want to get it in straight away, and they do. Another beautiful shot from Sophie Fawns. The confidence in her. And they're not close either. She's backing herself from distance early. But that's what you need. If you get the shooting bib, and your coach wants something different, that's exactly what you need to do. Well, and they'd like plenty more of the takes that are coming from Shimona Nelson as well. Talk about airtime, and her hands so strong now. Wow. Hadley. Proud. Well, Diva Mentor had a look at it, didn't she? Realised she was too far off it, though. Good ball. And we speak a lot about the movement in the shooting circle. as. Jeeva Mentor needs to two hands pull that rebound in. But when we speak about the shooting end of the New South Wales Swifts, look at the workload from the likes of Maddie Proud. I don't think she's stopped running yet, has she? Maddie Proud probably won't stop running. Like Forrest Gump even after the game <laughs> running out to the change room. Let's get down to Caitlin Bassett. Who have you been impressed by, Caitlin? Yeah, look, speaking of Maddie Proud, we talked about the impact that the mid-court are going to have on this match. She's currently smashing the Nissan net points. 50.5 versus who she's up against, Ash Brazel, on 25. So she has definitely got a lot of ball in hand. 13 goal assists and 17 feeds to her name. And she certainly was a standout last week too in the absence of Paige Hadley. Inside. Definitely one of the players that will fight to the end. Housby. Well, she's missed three, now four shots. The last four shots she's taken have been misses, so the radar off a little bit for Helen Housby. Well, how quickly the Collingwood Magpies get themselves down into that goal third, and that's the height difference. That's the reason that change has been made, isn't it, Sam? Absolutely. And as Paige Hadley gets super excited with the contact call to gain possession, but that's the stopping of that really confident lead. Um, sorry, that ball into the Magpies attack end when you've got really tall hands over the ball. 
Hadley, cross to Turner. Great patience from Turner to find proud forms. Vaughan again, it's a shot from distance. Sophie Forbes picking up exactly where she left off. And again, Nicole Richardson wants a chance to talk to her troops. It's an HCF timeout. Well, they're still in control here, Sam. What do you think she wants to have a chat with them about? They do, but I think that they've... Well, let's have a listen. You go, these guys. We're going to see some specky intercepts in a minute. Explain to us what Nicole Richardson was asking for. Look, there's nothing better than when a coach gives you license to fly. <laughs> so she, she, we hope to see that from the likes of uh, Jeeva Mentor. But it's the, the players, defensive players at the front doing that one-on-one -on -one work. And she identified the likes of Maddie Proud getting a long depth down the court. The back person needs to have the vision and come out and have a fly. So that's Jeeva Mentor. Absolutely. Right, and keep your eyes on Jeeva Mentor. And it's exciting to watch. Oh, she nearly wanted a piece of that one to Sophie Fawns again. A penalty outside the circle, though. So an easy two-on-one in for the Swifts. And, oh, Sophie Fawns, we spoke so much about the debutantes that have big games and struggle to back it up. She's not having any such struggle so far tonight. Bryony Akel wasn't overly poker-faced in her dislike of that call. I think that's the passion in the call. Yeah, it wasn't a great ball into Shimona Nelson, no, but one of the few. Yeah, but better by Clow in terms of mixing it up, and, and that's the possession gain and pressure that they need to, to keep adjusting and, and making something different for the Magpies to look at. Well, Ash Brazel had a touch at it, slaps her hands together, wishes she caught it, but it was a dangerous cross-court ball from the Swift, so lucky to keep possession here. Housby. Fawns, another one. Well, the first one in the miss, and Jeeva Mentor, what a block out. That rebound was no one's but her own's, but her own. Sophie Garbin back on here at goal attack. And I think that might be to another game by the New South Wales Swifts there. But I think that's maybe to match up this height that we've been speaking about. Garvin certainly brings a lot more height into that shooting circle and has had time to sit and watch. Oh, there's some long balls happening here for the Swifts. Good vision down court, but also very risky. Proud at the top. Who's going to pop forward? Helen Housby. Well, her radar has been off in recent shots. Is it back on? Well, they've got themselves back to even. Here's a Harvey Norman replay, and this time O'Shaughnessy getting a feet in front. Housby, proud. Fawns. Housby again. Fawns. So normally she'd probably turn and shoot that. Maybe still not feeling overly comfortable. Pass off to Fawns. Why would you not, though? Because she's been doing exactly that. Six from seven for Sophie Fawn since she entered the game. And the Swifts back in control up by two. Hasn't it shifted in the last couple of minutes, the intense and a couple of turnovers in that defence end and scoring? Sophie Fawn's doing a wonderful job to make sure that they're scoring off their position, uh, possession. And you can see the dominance of Nelson. Her dominant spot is at top of the circle. So as a defender, you need to keep adjusting to make sure she doesn't shoot where she wants to. Well, the power five now in play. Just heard the siren in the background there. So will the Swifts look for the two-pointer. They probably don't need to at this point. 
If they land there, I suspect they'll shoot it, but otherwise they're going to chip away at this scoreboard. Sophie Garvin, Brown, Jovic. Brown, the drive straight across the top of the circle. And then here comes Sophie Garvin. She's just one from one after starting the game. That'll be her second. And they get it back to one. Four minutes to go in this first half. Adley, Cloud, Housby, Proud. Well, how many times has Maddie Proud found herself right on the edge of the circle? And a great build-up, patient build-up, and well-executed finish from Helen Housby. And that's the speed and that dynamic movement of the attack end. You can see the Magpies were off trying to defend that way, but you can't be off and have a fly if you're not doing the work and stopping the easy options. Yeah, a little trip over the feet, probably a bit unlucky there for Paige Hadley. Maddie Brown, uh, Kelsey Brown. Gosh. Be nice if she was still out there. Oh, I know, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> fire all over Maddie the floor with the speed attack. of the two Brown sisters. Well, there it is. And that's the fly that she was talking about just one tiny second earlier, and that's Mentors, but at least she's changing it up. Ross, a long ball, and given the last few have been sprayed, or a few this quarter have been sprayed, probably not the best choice of pass. No, and if you actually look at Nelson, her eyes were down and she wasn't even ready uh, for that pass. So risky, and another fly out see from Mentor. So well, she's having a, look, a crack. Yeah, have a look at Sophie Fawns too. Well, three shooting opportunities for the Swifts there. They didn't take any of them. Wanted it a little bit closer, and it comes through Helen Housby. 20 from 24 for Helen Housby. And if we talk about the volume, they're saying that they don't have this massive tall target anymore. They do need the volume from both Fawns and Housby to get a win and to get those score on the board. Well, two minutes to go until halftime, and the New South Wales Swifts up by three. Sophie Fawns can make it four, and she does. What an up and down first half we've seen. It was the Magpies by two in the first, and currently the New South Wales Swifts leading this quarter by six. Beautiful intercept and kept it in play by Maddie Turner. Well, it brought the crowd alive, didn't it? A big cheer in the background. Helen Housby wants a two-pointer, wants to make this game a game. Look at the scream on her face. Well, what a last-minute charge from the New South Wales Swifts before half-time. Really want to set themselves up nicely. Thorns. Oh, dribbles in. Look at her, she's just so confident. Owning her job and not even one bit fussed that she's on Jeeva Mentor. Jeeva who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, Sophie Garvin and Sinclair both on together now, and this will be the reason. Sinclair, one of the greats at the Suncorp Super Shot. Well, that'll keep them in the hunt. Back to five, the difference. Under a minute to play in this first half. Proud, forwards, proud again. Oh, another contact will happen here. Jody M. Ward out of play. It's in the Suncorp Super Shot zone. Helen Housby takes it. She wants that buffer back. There's still plenty of time here for the Collingwood Magpies. 20 seconds to play, down by seven. Sinclair. Well, can't make it drop. Can the New South Wales Swifts get this up court? They're going to have to move. Well, it was a cheeky little contact that came, but it did its job. The New South Wales Swifts, a complete turn of events from that first quarter to the second. They won that second quarter 11.
to 20. Yeah, it's uh, very disappointing. Like, we did start very well. Um, I think we've just got to go back to our fundamentals, work the ball a little bit closer to the circle edge. Uh, we'll try and separate um, them in the attack end and control the middle um, channel is our aim um, in our attack end. And uh, obviously, we need to make sure that we convert in underneath that post. So we'll see how we go in the second half. Richo, what's your messaging to your defence and what's the answer to stopping this, this moving attack end with the New South Wales Swiss? Well, A, we've got to make sure that we deny the circle sweep and rotation and uh, use, use, use each other in there. We can step across to the baseline to cut that sweep um, and then use the split ring where need. And can you give us some insight? Is that why we've seen the change in, in Jovic coming to wing defence and Ash Braz in the centre? Oh, oh, we're just seeing if we can get a bit more drive in the attack and that's sort of the difference there. Um, Braz, he just gives us a little bit more drive to get to circle edge. Well, Nicole, or Richo, as Sophie Garbin said, we must call you. We'll leave you to it. All the best for the second half. Cheers, guys. Well, there you go. Plenty for the Collingwood Magpies to work on. And interesting to see the attack line still lining up the same. So Nelson's still sitting on the bench for the Collingwood Magpies. Garbin and Sinclair given the job to start this second half. The margin now out to 10, though. Gabby Sinclair, well, she's got a hot hand, hasn't she? Not super shot time, so it's just the one, but good to see that she's happy to shoot the, the ones from distance. And she needs to. We've seen Nelson be so uh, dynamic and, you know, really stepped up with shooting at 100% and, and volume up. She needs to shoot. They're both attackers, goal attacks for the bad guys at the start. Just haven't been putting up the shots. Housby, well, speaking of putting up shots, continues on. A little bit shaky in the midst of that second quarter, but she's been good since, sitting at 85% Brown. And Sophie Garvin has one of the best standing jumps that I've seen in the game. She is so strong in the air, so you don't lose a whole heap by putting Nelson to the bench, as far as I'm concerned, in that change. No, if Garvin does come on and really fire, I mean, we've seen her previous years where she's even dominated Courtney Bruce from Fever, who's a diamond defender with that ability to really get up strong and take the ball. So I'm guessing that's why the change has happened. Yeah, I'm excited to see this one. Sophie Garvin obviously went to the Collingwood Magpies for more court time. Hasn't had that and not had a good start to the season. As we just see a little miscommunication there between Sinclair and Ash Brazzle. The last thing the Magpies want to do at this point is give the Swifts more opportunity when they find themselves down by 10. direct from Hadley to Fawns. And again, the rotation happening. Not any closer, I would have thought. Sophie Fawns and a rebound for Jeeva Mentor. Magpies have to score here though, don't they? They absolutely do. The intent that they've bought already and letting the ball go is a lot better. They've got to transition quickly. And in the back of play, we see that combination that we spoke about at the start of the game in Mentor coming off and Newton coming on at goalkeeper. Let's see if she can answer this dynamic swift attacking end. Well, straight away, there you go, Sam Pullman. You asked the question. <laughs> it's nice when they back you in, isn't it? <laughs> Housby, proud. Horns. Well, she's had to take the majority of her shots from that same distance. So they're at least sort of blocking the post there, the two defenders for the Collingwood Magpies. Brown, again, direct. And there's that elevation from Sophie Garvin. And the feed that we saw, it was really hard to beat from Brown in that first quarter. It's now back, which is hard to beat. Turner. Oh, Hadley, sorry, Housby. Across the circle to Proud. I've seen that a few times. And that follow-up drive coming from Helen Housby. Good patience on the feed from Paige Hadley. So the New South Wales Swifts continue and keeping control of that 10-point buffer. And leading this quarter 7-4 to four already. Sinclair again straight in. And that's the confidence the players have with Sophie Garvin back there. Such an athlete. And the strength she brings on the in, in the tape. Defenders just can't get near it. 
Housby. Hadley. Fawns out of the circle. Doesn't want to use it, though. Proud, again, at the top, on the edge of the circle. So often we see her there. And Fawns. Shooting well, 11 from 13, 85%. So she's been good. Long ball, Brazzle, Sinclair, Brown, Sinclair again. Couple of quick double plays. And, and it then, opens up beautifully. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's just that patience. And as Nicole Richardson said, she wants that extra pass, that work onto the edge of the circle. And then Sophie Garvin, one on one, unstoppable. Time in possession, the New South Wales Swifts, 56, so a lot more ball. But I feel like they were a lot more patient too in that second half, and that's where that time comes from. And that was the difference. They were happy to allow that extra pass to continue to swing till it opened up to make sure. And that's what happened with the difference with Magpies, is now they're letting it go and making better decisions, but that's where they dropped off. They were going and letting it go, and it wasn't on. Well, Sophie Garvin, hasn't she made a difference since she's come on? Now eight from eight. Great, goal defence, free pass. And a breaking call. So the Swiss will have a penalty. And Magpie's really pushing them wide. Both Barbie's Hadley and Proud on defense. each side of the court. Barbie's contact, Barbie's offside. Let's goal defender in the one. Well, in the one, please, feel like. Please. Jodie Ann Ward starting to rack up the penalties. And it's because Helen Housby is just going so strongly for the ball and milking them. Well, she's sitting on eight or nine now. Not the most penalised in the side, but it's probably just because they seem like silly ones that we're noticing them. Great vision over the top. Kelsey Brown finds Sinclair under the post by herself. Well, Pegged one back, the Collingwood Magpies, but still got some work to do to chase this score down. I suspect in a couple of minutes' time they might be going for some of those Suncorp super shots. Try and close the gap again. That rotation inside the circle is so hard to defend. It absolutely is, and this is where you need to train all week to be able to beat something like that. Defenders, rather than continually chasing, and a beautiful ball, that vision once again by Kelsey Brown. And the drive from Gabby, that's something we haven't seen overly much tonight. No, well, she's certainly got to step it up now, doesn't she? Normally when Shimona Nelson's on, she's more of a feeding role. Have a look at the work, though. Maddie Proud and Paige Hadley. Maddie Proud, 84 Nissan net points, and Paige Hadley's sitting on 37.5. Really combining beautifully. And again, they balance the workload, don't they? So it becomes hard to defend. And we speak about what's the answer to Sammy Wallace, and I think it's the entire attack end for the New South Wales Swifts. We saw they're lacking a little bit in the centre court last week, and that's because Paige was out. Now she's back this week. You can see the load between them and how nicely that's opening up in the shooting uh, circle, sorry. Um, as a real good effort from the New South Wales Swifts long court defence, and they get rewarded by the hell ball. That will definitely please Bryony Akel. Certainly held up the Collingwood Magpies for a long time, and eventually the error came. Fawns, Hadley. And again, they've got one or two options inside the circle. Now, what do you make of that change with Newton? Do you think it was a good one? I think she's doing a better job in terms of tagging. We haven't seen it. We saw her, sorry, when she first came on and got hand to ball. I don't think she's doing too badly. Her now step up is she needs to get hands on ball because if they're going to get this match back, they need possession in their hands. What well, is an HCF timeout? Let's head right? down to the Swifts hut. We'll have a listen to the head coach, Bryony Aker. Helen, if you back in here, just say this is there. The positional got... switch one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you're both sitting behind, right, and waiting to see what happens, all you need to, someone needs to punch through here. This one rolls out to post. I think we've gone away from working to the post. We're running around them in circles. Just have one person just at the post holding. Hold them front, yeah? You know we did at training that, yeah. just hold them, yeah. yeah? And then we can have the other one sweeping. At the moment, we go back into a running race of laps around the goal circle. Uh -huh. All right, good job. Oh, yeah, I reckon you can get a tip on this centre pass. I know. Really? Your mission is to get a tip on a centre pass. Helen, uh, let's, let's half one, just play sides with yeah. one. 
Yeah. Well, interesting to hear that we were praising the New South Wales Swiss for their rotation, and Riley Aigle doesn't want that to happen. She wants one to be doing the running and the other really just to put themselves under the post. I was going to say that their running race was working perfectly. Yeah, well, I thought so too, but maybe she's just thinking long term. It's a very quick turnaround it's between also round exhausting, three. Right? Of course it is. Round four is happening on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, so maybe she just wants the players to reserve some of that energy. <laughs> and also challenge them. They're going to play a team on, on Tuesday, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday next week, and then the weekend. They need to be doing something different to challenge the defenders. Caitlin Bassett had a listen in to the Collingwood Magpies huddle. What'd you pick up? Yeah, look, Nicole Richardson very happy with their attacking end, which is starting to click, but urging her defenders to pick up more ball. So she instructed them, instead of chasing that moving circle, just to stay put and stick to sides. Let's see if it can pick them up some more ball. Well, the two coaches are playing into each other's hands, and there it is, the call coming from Nicole Richardson. Well, she's telling them not to chase. Bryony Akel doesn't want them to run. So <laughs> this will be very interesting. And a good tip coming from Sarah Clough too. It's been a while since she got one. She had that screamer against Nelson in the first quarter. Been a little quiet since. So they've got it back to eight now. The Collingwood Magpies and the centre pass to follow. Well, they did have it and they've thrown it away. Maddie Turner. And look at the general play turnovers. Well, 16 to nine. The Collingwood Magpies. So spraying plenty of ball. And we spoke about that in pre-game, that they'd only won one quarter in each of their last appearances. And this is why, because they start off in such a dominant first quarter and won it, and then the last two have just faded away. Well, they are the most uh, errors across the league. They sit number one for turnovers. We just see Taylor Fraser sub in at centre. So Paige Hadley gone to the bench for a little bit of a breather. And really smart considering they've got two games next week. The fact she's returning from COVID, the toll that that takes, really smart coaching decision. Well, we'd almost forgotten about the COVID, hadn't we? Because Paige Hadley wasn't showing any signs of that in the first half of the game. <laughs> Jovi and a great contest coming from Maddie Proud as well. Sinclair. Good tip again. So lots Ooh, of tips lucky. coming. Yeah. Do you think lucky, that came yeah. off? Brown? I reckon that was Maddie Turner. And that's why that uh, that's why she's out there at wing defense. That long hand to the ball. That's exactly why. Well, it certainly is a height difference when you see them standing next to their opponents. Turner on Ash Brazel. There it is on your screen. And some good rotation coming here too. Sophie Garvin, well, she's certainly found the radar. That is a Suncorp super shot. We're now in power five time, and that will help their cause. 14 to 11 in this third quarter. The New South Wales Swifts winning it by three. And there's your score breakdown. So quarter one was two to the Magpies, and then the Swifts dominant in that second. Just the one, the difference now in the third. Sophie Fawns pulls the trigger as well. Two from 14 from Sophie Fawns last week, 14 from 16 and one from two in super shot range. So she's on track. Oh, look at the height difference there, Sarah Clow and Kelsey Brown. <laughs> Brown, Sinclair again going for the long ones and sinking them, getting themselves back in this contest. The con they're calling with magpies. And that's exactly what they need to do. The other end now need to get ball so they can create opportunity for their attackers. It's a simple game netball, really, isn't it? Yeah, can turn ball shoot. over, shoot goals. <laughs> Easy as that. <laughs> Helen Housby. Not going to let them in the contest, though. And all the Swifts need to do is chip away. They don't need to go looking for the two-point shots. Brazzle. Yeah, well, the pressure came, didn't it, from O'Shaughnessy. She didn't touch the ball, but just her presence was enough to make Kelsey Brown drop it. 
Carlisle. Oh, they're making it hard for themselves, the New South Wales Swifts. Fawns, Housby. Proud Fawns. Again, that triangle at the top of the circle really has opened up the circle beautifully, hasn't it? And it's so hard to beat as a defender. Shooting stats. So Helen Housby had that shaky bit in the middle, but has been solid since 87% and a good support of 88% coming from Sophie Fawns. Another one, feet just inside that two-point range. And it's interesting, we've spoken a lot about the Swift's attackers burning that baseline. Now they're getting the ball easily at the top of the circle and turning and shooting. We're just under one and a half minutes left in this third quarter. And it's back to 10. So the Collingwood Magpies made a run for it. If they can sink this, they're going to do that. So Gabby Simpson, well, she's turned it on. Another Suncorp super shot. Three from five now from Gabby Simpson. And this is where this super shot play comes in beautifully as it showcases the confidence and the ability to shoot from long from our shooters, but also the defenders. Can they be switched on at the moment? The defenders from the New South Wales Swifts are allowing the Magpies, as we see another possession change from Magpies. Well, Ash Brazel not happy though. She did mumble some words to the umpire. I feel like she thinks she was contacted in the process and the bodies are falling here. So it's getting a little physical in this last 30 seconds of the third quarter. And the Swifts take it to 11. So another massive quarter. Here's the replay in the air. Well, Taylor Fraser's body was there, but she wasn't contesting. No, I just think it was a miss jump and feed, which is the struggling thing in coach killer for the Magpies. As we see Helen Housby nail another super shot. Well, look at the face of Bryony Akel. It's a smirk <laughs> little unfairly happy. The New South Wales Swifts take control here. They're up by 13 as they head into the last quarter. Don't go anywhere. Well, what do the Collingwood Magpies do here, though? They've got to get themselves back in the contest. They do. We can see that uh, Maggie Lynn has come on in wing attack again, looking for an option. I'd say that that's because there was a bit of a connection breakdown between Brown and, and Brazel, but they need to back themselves in a shot. Feeds like that. And like we've been saying, get hand on ball. Well, good to see too that Sophie Garvin has been allowed to stay out on court in goal shooter. She was impressive in that second quarter. So Shimona Nelson not taken court uh, to the court again since half time. Turner, Fraser, Proud, Fawns. Back to Proud again. Just that patient build up coming from the New South Wales Swifts. Fraser. This is where we talk about the entire attack end playing a role. They're patient to allow something to open up. And she, isn't she confident? I love it. I just love it too because, you know, I keep saying it over and over again, it's hard for the debutantes to have two good games in a row, but Sophie Fawns is up for that challenge. Garvin. So strong on the hold. But they've got to get the ball down there. They need plenty more of it. And they're certainly going to find themselves under some pressure when we get to that power five time. They're going to have to shoot them up. Proud. Housby. Across to Proud again. Jackie Newton had a little look at it. And then all too easy. Beautiful setup coming from the New South Wales Swifts to find Fawns for her 17th shot of the game. We spoke about Richo giving her defenders a license to have a go, and this is their opportunity. If they want to change this scoreline, and they're very lucky with all I thought that went the other way then. Well, that's a coach killer, isn't it? Absolutely. Certainly doesn't look happy, does she? Nicole Richardson fries up. Well, that's losing possession that's so hard to get back over a little simple thing. Housby. Fries up. There's that movement again. 
Love seeing Sophie Fawns. She's actually going up to Newton and trying to set a screen on her so then she can open up. She's doing that really well. She's reading it beautifully. And that's what Barony said to her in that break was, I want you to hold strong, find that body and come forward for the ball. So we're not just talking about, as we see these two have a bit of a laugh and a clash off the floor, but this is what we're talking about. Welcome to Super Netball. You can't just rely on one thing. You need to be able to stick it to all the uh, defenders in the competition. And we look at the uh, penalties. Well, Harvey Norman replay here. Just a little bit of a tussle between the two. Very good mates, Maddie Proud and Ash Brazel. Well, you're right, though. We did just see the penalties, and it is a blowout, isn't it? 50, for the Collingwood Magpies. Exactly. 53 to Magpies and 36 to the Swift. So if we talk about them being able to build pressure and get balls, standing out of play is the answer. And 20 general play turnovers as well. Only nine to the New South Wales Swifts, which is a real credit to their patience that we've been speaking about in this game. They're making sure that they let the ball go when it's on rather than throwing a risky pass or something that's not on. Well, nine turnovers, six of them were in the first quarter. So since then, they have really cleaned it up. And if they could keep it under 10, that is an extremely good performance. And that's the Swifts that we know and are so hard to beat. As we see Jeff, Jeva Mentor come back on to the ball and have a fly at that pocket ball. Well, now up by 15, the New South Wales Swifts. So the pressure is mounting on the Collingwood Magpies for that power five time. They're going to have to start pulling the trigger on those Suncorp super shots. In the meantime, though, let's get it over the top to Sophie Garvin. Is the school of thought coming from Lind? Okay. Fraser, Housby, Fawns. Well, Fawns, more often than not, will pass out again when she gets the ball inside the circle, particularly in this game. Hasn't turned and taken the first opportunity. Would love to see her start to do that. Brown, Lind again. The fresh legs on, and she's finding that feed beautifully over the top to Sophie Garvin. And that's exactly what they need to do and what we saw when they were dominant in the start of the game. But a little bit of urgency. This ball needs to get back. If they want to bring this game back, little things like this, they need to get it back, start in play. As we say, whoa, that's so much better for her. She gets two hands on the ball. Well, the urgency was there in that first quarter, wasn't it? We mentioned and it, it over went. and over again how quickly they were getting to the penalties, how quickly they were taking them. And it's just dwindled as the game's gone on. Lind, again, she's got eyes wholly and solely for Sophie Garvin, doesn't she? So much confident in that delivery and that connection. And I hope that's the beauty of sitting on the bench and actually looking at. She would have seen... Oh, contact wing defence. Ash Brazel in the middle of two Swifts players trying to juggle for possession. And let's just have a look at the Harvey Norman replay here, trying to juggle it. And it looked as though Maddie Turner was the one that just ran over the top of it. And you can see Ash Brazel, the frustration on her yeah. face. And why wouldn't you be that cool when it's so hard to get ball back? It's been building, hasn't it, too? We saw a glimpse of it before when she was having a chat back towards the umpires. Fawns again, though, she had an opportunity inside the circle and passed it out. They're scoring off it, so at this point it's not it's a big okay. deal. But at this level, that's going to come back to haunt you. Fawns. Which is interesting because she's displayed the ability to shoot from long Absolutely. range. Absolutely, and the confidence to do so. So I don't know if it's just a mannerism that she's got herself... Or maybe getting the ball moving, but... When you do do that, whether you want to pass out, um, getting your hips around in that vision allows you to move a defender as well. Watch this space, hey? Yeah, wow, you're starting to talk hips and everything. <laughs> There's the two brains trust for the New South Wales Swiss, Beck Bully and Bryony Akel, both former players for the club. As we take part in Heritage Round this weekend. Fraser. And both crucial in terms of that legacy and, and who's Ready, worn the dress center. before by these athletes so they know that they're not only representing the Swifts but they're also representing the legacy of players who are in the crowd today cheering them on. Well, question for you then, Sam Pullman. 
The first quarter they won. Shimona Nelson on. Since then, they've lost every quarter. 20 to 11, 23 to 17. It's now 8 to 7. It's not like Sophie Garvin isn't producing the goods when she's got it. But do you think that's part of the puzzle? I think it's interesting. Nelson was really dominant. When we talk about volume, she has the volume. The answer that they're missing is that goal attack position. Yeah, I agree. So they need somebody who's going to make the defenders accountable and drive and will put the ball up when they want to, not leave all the pressure onto the goal shooting position. Yes, Garvin's been great, but I think they're missing Link as a goal attack. Yeah, I feel like there was far more urgency out the front, sorry, I just had to throw the ball back in. <laughs> Touch the game ball, woohoo! But there seemed to be far more urgency in the midcourt too, and the speed in the midcourt in that first quarter. Oh, beautifully read by Maddie Turner, picking up the ball in the, in the middle of the court. I've actually really liked her coming on wing defence. The long arms in the midcourt has certainly made a difference, and an unusual over-the-top error by, the, by Maddie Proud. Well, she's on 118, missing that point. She's oh, so got, she she's got to be <laughs> She's got room to lose a few. <laughs> Had an absolute blinder as the co-captain for the New South Wales Swiss. Well, two bad passes in a row. I blame you, Sam Pullman. And just like that, well, that's the speed and the urgency that the Collingwood Magpies were showing in that first quarter down court extremely quickly. And as a coach, I think this is where maybe the frustration will come from is there's glimpse of brilliance like Ward, as you can see on the Harvey Norman replay, coming through and taking that clean intercept that they've been asking for all night. So I think there's glimpses of, you know, really dominant attacks, some really great intercepts in defence, and then also some poor decision-making and loss of possession. Housby, proud. Fawns inside the circle again, does not even turn. Definitely keen to keep the flow on the ball, isn't she? Get another pass, get a little inch closer. And, and isn't she's she so, loving it. Yeah, Look at she's her smile enjoying the and you know what? That's the worst thing to do as a defender, knowing that your opponent's not only confident, but she's laid back and enjoying it too. So you expected to fire up Jeeva Mentor if she turns around and sights that. <laughs> I really love Lynn, what she's come on and done. The job to look at that circle, give that feed. And I think she's been a real nice difference in this last quarter. As we see Ash Braz get a touch on the ball and the umpires let it play. Well, Nicole Richardson up on her feet though, hands so in the air in the background. Well, they are letting a bit go at the moment. And it's certainly getting physical. I think Ash Brazel certainly frustrated because Maddie Proud has given her an absolute bath tonight and she's tried everything and it's just not coming off. And we always talk about how dominant and the ability to come through on clean intercepts of Ash Braz. And I think credit to Maddie Proud able to get the ball but also land on top of the circle is a reflection that you've taken your game and we can see this is the replay of the umpiring call yeah nothing in that i reckon maddie proud put a head down charged for it and she loves to hit the floor yeah she does but that was her ball for sure good umpiring call there hcf timeout now and we'll see if we can have a listen in here in the swift huddle anything i'm going to tell you to do They've got a very beautiful buffer here, 15 goals, but they want more. 
this will no doubt be their first win of the season. But it's about the bigger picture too now, isn't it? Getting their season back on track and defending that premiership. Haven't started a season down two games since 2012. And that's the difference between a side that's going to contest for finals is, yes, they might be dominant in their performance. Beautiful, confident shot, exactly what Sinclair needs to do. But she wants, uh, Brony Ankle, the Swiss coach, wants more. Crowd forms. Cross to Fraser. Helen Housby. Little swing, Maddie Proud, again, at the top of the circle. Finds herself there all the time. Sophie Fawns still smiling. Jeeva Mentor, do not turn around. You don't want to see it. Well, here it is. Some court super shots have to be taken now from the Collingwood Magpies. Get the ball to that lady there, Gabby Sinclair. She's hot for them. That's her fifth of the game. And they need to be draining them to keep themselves in the contest. Four minutes left to play. Turner, Plow, Turner, long to Fawns outside the circle. On oh, demanding the ball again. Well, what are they going to do with it? The New South Wales Swiss have an opportunity to shoot the long and they probably should have taken it. So a big opportunity here for the Collingwood Magpies. Absolutely. There's your, there's your intercept, seven for the Collingwood Magpies. So as we've mentioned time and time again, they're doing a little bit of a Thunderbird in this game in that they're winning plenty of ball back, but just turning it over. Well, Thunderbirds of old, I should say. I was going to say, be careful what you say. And another, and this is where the frustration comes from, is they're waiting for that call. The umpire said play on, and they've once again lost possession, which at this level in Super Netball, you can't be popping up ball from a simple pull or a play on. Turner, Plow. Back to Turner, again, really patient from the New South Wales Swiss, not forcing it too long until that point. Lucky to keep it, Jackie Newton had her eyes on it. On the board, New South Wales Swiss still leading by 13, it's actually the Collingwood Magpies up by one, though, in this final quarter. Measure shooting accuracy. Bronny Ake will be oh, certainly goal happy goal with defense. that. Goal defender. 88, 89 percent. What I like is the volume goal between goal. both the shooters is impressive. Vaughan's definitely stepped up, as I mentioned before. 14 goals last week. And Gabby Sin two Sinclair points. again. Fraser, Turner, Hadley. Well, Hadley back on. So Maddie Proud now gone to the bench. I thought that might have been happening. There was a little whisper between coach and captain in that huddle. Thought Maddie Proud may have hurt herself in that collision before. So Hadley to finish off the game. Just under two minutes of play. The swing again. Oh, this time though, the feed goes to Jeeva Mentor. You'd suspect a little too late, though, for the Collingwood Magpies. Swing attack, centre contact. In the centre third, take a step back. Step back. Oh, Barney's not out of play, centre. I'll be frustrated from this performance tonight because there is glimpse, glimpses of great play and some great super shots by Sinclair. My question would be, where's this been for the last three teams? Well, that's right, Gabby. Sinclair really forced into it, hasn't she? But I'll tell you who'll be happy about that. That's the Confident Girls Foundation. Suncorp getting $100 for every Suncorp super shot that's fallen tonight. Center contact. Oh, Gabby Sinclair on the ground and still trying to contest. Hasn't that really been the story of the last three quarters of this game? Well, the Swifts will be comfortable winners and they will get their season back on track here as Sophie Fawns adds 
adds another one to the list. 24 from 27 for the 18-year-old from Wagga Wagga. What a meteoric rise it's been for her. Still not in the contracted 10. So Bryony Akel still looking for that rep permanent replacement player. And that's when we talk about opportunity. She's been brought in each week to do a job and that's all you can focus on. What do you bring and make the most of your opportunity? And as we see Sarah Clow get another touch of the ball. Well, there it is, the final whistle to very happy coaches and the flightless New South Wales Swifts finally have lift off as they take their first win of this 2022 season and wasn't it a good one in the end